This video is sponsored by our fine friends over at Hackster.io. If you want to see more projects like this, then head over to their website and browse through their thousands of different projects and topics. I want to make my dumb car smarter with a Raspberry Pi. Last week I experimented with setting up a backup camera. This time I want to add some way to detect the objects in the backup camera and see how close they are. As far as I know, there's two different methods in which backup cameras can tell distance. One is by using this little image overlay that has a color gauge. The other way is using some type of distance sensor that's attached to the back of the car. Going the image overlay route seems the least complicated of the two, so starting off, let's see if we can replicate that one. So a couple quick updates since my last video, I switched out my Pi camera for a Pi camera with a wide angle lens to increase the field of view. And secondly, I got this official Raspberry Pi touchscreen because it has a higher resolution, looks nicer, and just works better. Back in the lab, I set up this small scale simulation using Optimus Prime to help us out. Starting out, we need one of those backup image overlays and you can find the one that I used at the project page over at hackster.io. So let's create a new Python file and import the Pi camera in the image editor called PIL and time. Then with the Pi camera, we can set the resolution, the frame rate, and then we can start the camera preview. From here, we can import our image overlay and overlay it to the stream and then set the alpha and layer settings. Lastly, we can add an escape key and that's it. Short and sweet. Saving it and testing it out on our small scale, it works like a charm. You can see the image overlay and there's practically no lag, which is the goal. So let's test this out in the real world. Here's how we had things set up last week, with the camera duct taped temporarily to the license plate and the cable running to the pie on the dashboard. In case you were wondering, I got these six foot cables from Adafruit as well as this cable coupler. And again, you can find all the links for the parts I used at the project page. The real world test worked just as charmingly as the lab test, but as you can see, the camera itself can use some adjusting so that the objects don't appear so far back. We'll perfect the placement later though. So that can work as a basic backup camera. But what about object sensing and proximity detection? Most cars use a separate set of sensors to achieve that, similar to this ultrasonic distance sensor. But I really don't want to add anything else to the back of my car. Instead, I'd like to see if I could do it programmatically. Using Python to analyze what the camera sees to see if it can tell us how close an object is to the car. Having a computer analyze the contents of an image is known as computer vision. And as it happens, I did a basic computer vision video just a couple weeks ago. How convenient. All right, so the idea here is to have some sort of alert zone at the bottom of the viewing area that alerts us if anything enters it. Then we'll analyze the video for any objects and we'll find the boundaries of the objects and check to see if the bottom of the object is in the alert zone. If it is, then we'll display a message and make a sound. So let's see how far we can get. First, I'm gonna take this piezo buzzer and attach it to the Pi, wiring the power leg to pin 22 and the ground leg to a ground pin. Next, we want to install OpenCV, and on the Raspberry Pi, you can type pip3 install OpenCV-Python, and that should install it. Now we can create a new Python script and import time cv2, which is OpenCV, numpy, the Pi camera, and the Pi camera array, and then the GPIO pins. First, we'll set up the parameters for the buzzer so that Python can use it. Then we'll set up the camera parameters to capture the pixels of an image to an array. Pause the program for a split second to give the camera time to warm up and then start capturing the frames. We're gonna save each still as a frame and then we can measure the height and width of it and using that we can set our alert area at the bottom of the frame and draw a line on the image so that we know where it starts. Then we'll filter the image through a set of color ranges and pixel dilations to make it easier to detect objects. Also, we want to set a threshold value that we can adjust later on to help make our object detection more accurate. So if an object or objects are found, we want to sort through them and find the area in the center of each one. We can weed out any object that's smaller than our threshold and then we can get the area coordinates and the center coordinates of the remaining objects. Then let's draw a circle over the center coordinates of each object that is found and at the bottom edge of those objects, if it's below our alert area, let's display a message and set off the buzzer. Finally, we can display the image and then clear the stream and set the Q key as our escape button. Saving it and testing it out in our lab, it's detecting objects like it should, and now if one gets closer, the alarm sounds. Nice. 
Now we can see if it works in the real world situation and surprisingly it does. I honestly didn't expect that. While those results were definitely a lot better than I expected, it still needs a lot more testing in different environments before I can actually recommend using this myth. Let's just say that this is the alpha version of it and if you want to help make it better and perfect it then you can grab the code over the project page or directly at the GitHub page. Until then, I'd recommend going with the image overlay if you're gonna use this in real life. All right, well, I guess I can check backup camera off the list. Next, I wanna see if I can extract data from the car's OBD2 port and import it into the Raspberry Pi. But that may be a couple weeks down the road, so be sure to subscribe to my channel to get alerts to know when it's posted. If you have any ideas, you can submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com slash ideas. You can click here to watch more videos like this, and if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please feel free to donate at patreon.com slash tinkernut. Alright, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to youtube.com slash tinkernut.